Hello everyone, this is Ron from High Tech Legion and this is the Corsair H100 Extreme Performance Liquid CPU Cooler. And as part of their Hydro Series line, the H100 is the highest end of that lineup. They also have the H80, which was recently released at the same time as the H100, which is a single radiator. Now the H100, as you can see from the preview in there, actually uses a dual radiator, 240mm uh, cooling system. And as for compatibility, here in the front, it says LGA 775, 1155, 1156, and 1366, as well as AMD, AM2, and AM3. Although here, on the side, it also mentions compatibil compatibility with LGA 2011. Now, I'll explain that later on, why that is so, but uh, although it's not mentioned in the front. And also, of course, AM2, AM3, but it's not mentioned, but it is also compatible with FM1 sockets because the AMD FM1 sockets are basically the same layout as the AM2 or AM3 and AM3 Plus. And while here we're here on the side, let's see what uh, is listed here. You have the box of contents. You have it uh, listed uh, on the side in multiple languages and a promotional, uh, just a promotional blurb from Corsair. And here on the side of the box, uh, specifications for the radiator. The fan dimensions, a speed and airflow, and a static pressure. Those are very important. If you're if you're interested, it is the radiator is uh, 122 by 275 by 27 millimeter. So it is slightly thicker than a 25 millimeter radiator at 27 millimeter. And the fan dimension is the standard 120 by 120 by 25 millimeter. And uh, the fan speed can do from 1300 RPM to 2600 RPM. So that's a fairly good range. And uh, while producing 22 to 39 dBA, so it's not 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 too fairly loud, but uh, that's pretty decent, and it can actually uh, produce an airflow of 46 to 92 cfm. Uh, let's see what here on the back. Here you can find just a couple more promotional information, and compared to the CPU stock cooler of the Intel Core i7 uh, socket for the X58, the socket 1366. At 3.8 gigahertz, the stock CPU cooler will not be able to perform. While at the same time, the H100, which we have here, the it can do 66.5 degrees Celsius. So let us actually do the unboxing and see what we can find inside the box. So I'll lift it here on the front, and it's a protective foam. Just to move that aside, and like all Corsair products, you have this warranty information. An RMA service uh, sheet, and you have a quick fold out installation guide illustrated. There's no text, but it's very easy to follow, as you can see there. And on the other side as well, and uh, how to install it into your motherboard. And here we have the package itself. Let's start with the small ones and work through the main uh, radiator. Here you have a bag of screws. Let's see what the different kinds of screws are included for mounting. You have these long screws for mounting the radiator and a fan. And uh, these locking screws. Now these are standoffs. Should be four of these. One on each corner and there is finally the washers, I'm seeing it there. Actually, there's one more set of screw. Actually, these aren't washers. Yeah, these are the keys. Let's consult the... Here are the washers. Here we go. And another small screw. Let's put it back in the bag and continue on with the rest of the package. Here we have the back plates. Here is for uh, this is for the Intel one. You have the LGA 775, 1155, and 1366. It's adjustable. Now, now I mentioned why there the why. The Corsair H100 box mentions that this is compatible with Socket 2011. That is because Socket 2011 is essentially the same layout as Socket uh, 1366, with the exception uh, that it doesn't require a backplate since it's not passed through. Intel actually uh, has their own mounting area, and you just need to screw it in place so the threads from the uh, 
from the standoffs only have to be compatible with uh, the with the Intel 2000 socket 2011 and uh, see this is the AMD mounting uh, you have just two pieces it's for AMD mounting mechanism and let's put it back put it aside and here we have some box of silica, box of silica gel so that the documentation doesn't uh, throw moisture you have a small promotional solutions guide from Corsair but and here are the included fans see they're in separate bags and let's see if it's a three pin or a four pin it's a three pin fan Alright, so here we have the Corsair H100 out of the box and well, at least the main unit and here you have you can see these what the self-contained system is and you have uh, in a typical liquid cooling system you have the radiator you have the water the liquid of course you have the pump you have the reservoir and this is the pump reservoir and of course the tubing all in one product and uh, the radiator it's a dual fan radiator it is uh, is the only dual fan uh, 240 millimeter radiator available from Corsair they all have the, the H100 H80 and H60 all have the single radiator 120 millimeter uh, fans here you can actually put in a push-pull configuration let's look at the main unit first right underneath you have the cold plate There's plastic cover in there to protect the pre-applied thermal paste of course there's copper and if you want to remove that you can you can just clean that up and put in your own thermal uh, interface material that you that is of your choice but that uh, if you if you only apply it once that is more than good enough there and you just uh, all you need to do is just screw it in place depending on your motherboard and you are good to go and here of course the the hoses are attached you can't remove it and uh, here on the other side you have the Corsair link proprietary, proprietary connector and is of course you can't control all your Corsair products from the desktop using a Corsair link there if you have that this power connector of course is where the Corsair H100 draws its power from you have a two pin uh, connector here but it's Molex four pin or you can connect it to a three pin it's actually just a single pin and uh, the, this is an adapter and uh, you can also uh, attach your four pin PWM fans here up to four of them from your case and control it with the Corsair H100 now as for speaking of control as you can see here on the top of the unit there these actually light up and these are the every time you press it it will change the setting from first one is silent second is balance and the third one is performance so you can uh, push the highest fan setting you can use and uh, let's move on see the wire here and move on to the radiator itself as I mentioned it's two mounting holes either you want it to a pull configuration or a push or a push pull configuration it is slightly thinner than a typical radiator for a dual uh, 240 millimeter it is actually 127 millimeters so make sure that your case has enough clearance on top and uh, it is I am using a Corsair carbide 400R which has enough clearance on the top for a single fa uh, rather a push fan configuration but you can't if you're going to put a push-pull configuration make sure that there is sufficient clearance in your case to do so and now let's uh, install this into our test system and see how well the Corsair H100 cooling system performs as I was installing here the uh, Corsair H100 I ran a little, a little bit of a clearance issue and as you can see this is the uh, Sabertooth X79 LJ2011 motherboard and the 8 pin power connector is right on the edge so the uh, with the fans and a push configuration it actually sits on the cable so uh, it actually I don't have enough clearance to screw it in place because I would have to force it in uh, so that that would be an issue I might have to move it on a different case and see this is a carbide 400R and there's a clearance issue right uh, for motherboards that have the 8 pin power connector at the very topmost area so uh, I'm going to try a different case and or maybe actually let me see if I can force it in and uh, and uh, screw it in place and see if it works. Right, so here we have uh, the Corsair H100 installed in a larger full tower case this is the CM Storm Trooper full tower case and as you can see 
I have the fan in there in a push configuration pushing outward to the radiator and there now is enough clearance in the 8 pin CPU connector. Now before we proceed with installing the rest of the Corsair H100 into the motherboard, first this is, since this is an LGA 2011, Corsair provided these standoffs that are specifically made for LGA 2011 motherboards. With LGA 2011 motherboards, the, there's no backplate required and it is integrated into the motherboard itself. So we will take these and plug four of these in so we can mount our Corsair H100. Right, now we have the cold plate and the pump uh, on top of our CPU and of course if uh, it already has a pre-applied heat uh, thermal paste but if you're going to use a separate thermal paste don't forget to put one before you put in the cold plate. And now we are going to take one of these thumb screws and lock each corner. Now you should do this in a crisscross fashion and don't completely secure one. Uh, do it crisscross fashion one at a time so that there's evenly applied pressure until you're actually ready to secure it completely. Similarly like how you would do a, uh, the push pin in a crisscross fashion and of course you take a screwdriver, a slot head screwdriver there and complete it, uh, completely secure it in place. Once you have secured all four corners, of course you should proceed to plug in the two of the fans on top, plug it into the Corsair H100's uh, fan headers that are built into the uh, main unit. And of course take the four pin fan header, uh, four pin power connector and plug in your power supply. You can also use the three pin adapter there and plug it into your motherboard. And now we are ready to run the Corsair H100 and see how well it performs.